Hi, Jim McConnell, McConnell Labs, manufacturers of Light Elegance nail products. And here you are with us on another Chemist Corner. Thank you very much for your attention. Today we're going to talk about oligomers. What are oligomers? Well, those are just really big blocky resins that we have a tendency to use when we make gel products. But how do we name them and why is it important? So we name them based on the components that go into it. And the reason why it's important is because a lot of times when we name an oligomer, it contains some names that you typically might not want to find in your gel. If you have an allerg allergy to say HEMA, hydroxyethylmethacrylate, and you see HEMA in the name of the oligomer, then the problem there is that you might think you'll be allergic to the oligomer. The case there is no, you won't be. And the reason why is because HEMA is, as a free monomer is what you're allergic to. HEMA as a component of a much larger molecule, you're not allergic to it. So when we take a look at how to name oligomers and why it's important, one of the oligomers that we use in our gel systems is bis-HEMA poly 1,4-butane diol-9 forward slash IPDI copolymer. So what does that mean? So that means that we use 1,4-butane diol molecules. We use nine of them. We build a backbone. That backbone is then capped with IPDI, isoferone disocyanate, as a capping agent. And then that is then capped with HEMA. So the HEMA here is the same HEMA that you might be allergic to. However, it is bound, 100% bound, to the IPDI, which is bound to the poly 1,4 butane diol-9. So all of that forms the copolymer. In this case, with HEMA, we have the bis in front of it. So we use, bis means two, it could be dihema, but in this case, bis-HEMA. So there's two HEMA molecules that are bound to the two IPDI uh, molecules, which are bound to the nine 1,4 butane diol molecules. So that's how we name something like an oligomer. That is completely different than some of the ingredients, ingredients you might see that just list acrylic copolymer. So an acrylic copolymer would be something akin to uh, your acrylic powder. Your acrylic powder is gonna be polymerized ethyl methacrylate. So you can polymerize ethyl methacrylate, methyl methacrylate, or other methacrylates to make an acrylic copolymer. So you'll see those in there. That is also, that's actually a polymer. It's not a liquid component like the bis hema 14 butane diol 9 IPDI copolymer. Um, this is actually a solid, and we can dissolve that solid when we make a gel polish or other systems. And then you can also, you'll see HEMA in your ingredient list, or one, uh, sorry, 2-hydroxyethyl methacrylate. So this is the long name for HEMA. Sometimes you'll also see a 2 in front of the HEMA. So that and this are the same. Now when you look at your ingredient list or a material safety data sheet, or now called an SDS, if HEMA has a comma after it, that's free HEMA as a monomer. And that is something com completely different than if you see HEMA in a long, long name like this one. Here, this HEMA, there's no comma after the HEMA, therefore it's bound HEMA. Here, we have a comma after the 2-HEMA or just regular HEMA. In that case, it is free or monomeric HEMA. So if you look at our ingredient list and you see this, then it has HEMA as a bound product, not a monomeric or free HEMA. But if you look at an ingredient list and you see HEMA followed by a comma and you are allergic to HEMA, then this is the product you'd want to avoid where this product here will have no effect on your health. Jim McConnell, McConnell Labs, Chemist Corner, talking about how we name oligomers. If you have any questions, post them down below. We'll go ahead and answer them as soon as we can. And thank you very much for your time and your attention. All right, bye-bye.